I want to talk a little bit about AI. A lot of people might not realize you're on the board of OpenAI. Um, mm -hmm. And you're the only person in, in, in medicine on that board. So talk to me a little bit about how that came about. Um, and I, and I want to obviously talk about the implications of that, what you're excited about and what you're afraid of. So I joined um, the OpenAI board almost a year ago now um, when they had um, had had in November of uh, 2023 what they call the blip, which mm -hmm. is uh, CEO fired, board yep. changed uh, over. Um, and I have been um, so impressed by the intellect, the commitment, the sense of responsibility of folks at OpenAI. Um, I hope this is um, this is maybe a, a little crazy, but here's what I hope. Uh, if I had a top two things for AI, one is in some of the things we've been talking about in product development. I mean, I love product development. I think it is the best job on earth. Mm. You get to make new medicines for people who are sick. Who wouldn't, you know, you go home and tell your mom and dad that they're happy. Yeah. So, so what if we could take the tool of AI and make easy the things we can make easy. So you don't use AI to change a clinical trial. I still want to know, does your tumor shrink? Do you feel better? Do you have side effects? But there's a lot of study reports. There's toxicology reports. There are a lot of things that are labor uh, and paperwork that are actually very important to establishing the safety, uh, especially, but also the efficacy of a drug. I think using AI more and more on pieces of the clinical trials process so that if something takes time, it's because it's benefiting a human, not because we just couldn't do it fast enough. So the clinical trials, I think, still has some uh, opportunities for that. What, tell, give me a time and money sense in terms of yeah. savings, because I, I, this yeah. is a very important question. How many, yeah. If you said that there's the, cl the entire clinical trials program for a drug is six years, let's just make that up, six, IND seven to years. IND to approval. Okay. Um, I would want to cut it down by two years. You, and, and you believe AI can do that right now? I, I think, mean, or we're on the path to that? I think we could be on a path to that. Yeah. Now, the the challenge of it is going to be if you say this example I like to give because it's it makes sense for people if I'm changing five-year survival if this is sort of a mature yes. established thing I got to wait five years yep I can estimate things and I can work with FDA to make sure if people can benefit we but, can and you could argue with a regulatory change in the FDA if we said greater emphasis on safety to approval, right. greater emphasis on post-market surveillance for efficacy. We shift this thing a little bit. Now you could say at three years we're trending, you get a provisional approvement, a, a a approval, approval, and now we're going to follow you. Like there's an example, like Paxlovid in my mind, yeah. you could argue maybe should have been pulled, maybe it wasn't as effective as it looked in the trials. And that doesn't mean they were wrong to approve it because it was any port in a storm. Right. But after the fact, we could have been, oh, you know what? No harm, no foul. It was safe. You can always do that. But yeah. Right. So, and, so, and so I agree with that you. For, maybe we do that for oncology. I think that the other thing is you and I both know if you have 500 patients in a trial and you look at safety, that's so limited. Yep. If you have a much more AI driven, why don't we follow safety in every patient? On the exactly. Drug? Ongoing. Ongoing. So I think the opportunities in clinical trials are massive. The other thing I would love to see is a change in the things that cause burnout of nurses and physicians and others in the hospital. Um, this is across the board, not just in clinical trials. Not in clinical yeah. trials. This is healthcare. Yeah. It, it, healthcare should ha have tools where it's easier to, it, it, you just decrease the, the load, the burden on both caregivers and families. I think that that should be doable. I mean, it's not that hard. I think that that is absolutely correct. Um, on the nursing front, there's a there's a huge demand, obviously. Um, how much of this do you think of absent robotics, right? So yeah. robots can really change the game. Yeah. I'm not close enough to that. Are you? Do you I'm not close enough to the robotics okay. piece of it. Yeah. No. So I don't, I don't know how long until a robot is doing what yeah. a nurse is doing. But um, when you think of 
medical and chart reconciliation and things yeah. like that. Is that where you think the greatest opportunity is? I think it is when you're trying to connect all the dots. Mm. That's the thing. To, 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 what AI does so brilliantly is it just takes a lot of data and it comes out with observations. And if there are ways that that can assist at the bedside, that's a massive improvement, especially when people are changing, you know, even me, University of Washington to UCSF, it's so hard to change caregivers, to change health systems. Those kinds of things can decrease workloads. But I also think it's the kinds of things where an, a clinical observations could be AI-driven. 